Hey, what's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Chris. It's your boy, Chris. It's another amazing episode of Financial Patient. This channel is all about making money. It's all about saving money. It's all about building generational wealth, and it's all about financially emancipating yourself from generational poverty. On this channel, everybody, I try to give you a six-figure MBA level worth of investing in financial knowledge for free here on YouTube. And the things that people typically spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to learn in grad school, I give it to you for free here on Financial Patient. Before I get started, I want to give a shout out to one of my sponsors, Killica Solutions. If you need website development, digital marketing, uh, things of that nature, they are the ones to go to. If you need somebody to edit your videos, they're the best in the business at doing that and they meet all of your digital needs, okay? So here at Financial Patient, everybody, I spend roughly 90% of my time talking about things like investments, 401k uh, investments, Roth IRAs, mutual funds, ETS, things of that nature, brokerage accounts, building generational wealth, because I truly do love the ministry of talking about money. To me, it's one of those kind of concepts that if a person learns how to invest their money, and they essentially uh, learn the effects of compound interest, they are essentially creating generational wealth that can last for eons. For this podcast, however, we're actually going to talk about something a little bit different. Um, As a black man in America, I have always loved the United States of America. This is my country. But let's face it, there is unfortunately a very large portion of America that unfortunately does not love men and women who look like me. And uh, there are some stories that unfortunately in the the history of the United States of America literally feel and sound like something straight out of Nazi Germany. For this particular podcast, everybody, we're going to talk about a woman who saved literally tens of millions and possibly hundreds of millions of people's lives that you have probably never heard of. This particular podcast, we're going to talk about the immortal Henrietta Lacks and how her family essentially used white medical racism and a medical travesty to finally get the kind of justice that their family deserves. And they're going to use that white medical racism to essentially build generational wealth. So with that, everybody, uh, let's get started on this very somber topic. So first and foremost, who was Mrs. Henrietta Lacks? Henrietta Lacks was born in 1920 in Roanoke, Virginia. She grew up um, as a tobacco farmer living with her grandfather. And in the 1940s, her and her husband and their five children moved from Virginia to Baltimore. As a young mother of five, Henrietta Lacks started uh, having vaginal bleeding and she uh, eventually visited the Johns Hopkins University uh, treatment for her medical uh, care. Once again, 1950s, uh, she had cancer. A gentleman named Dr. Howard Jones discovered a large malignant tumor on her cervix. And to John Hopkins credit, they were one of the only hospitals at the time that actually did actually accept poor African-Americans. Mrs. Mrs. Hen- uh, Henrietta Lacks, she began undergoing extensive radi- uh, radiation treatment for her cervical cancer, and she unfortunately lost her battle to cancer on October 4th in 1951. Upon her death, a sample unknowingly of her cancer cells were retrieved during a biopsy and they were sent to a Dr. George Gay's tissue lab. And this is where the story of Henrietta Lacks gets a little interesting because from a medical perspective, it was very unethical for them to take her cells, but they noticed extremely interesting, almost phenomenal superhuman um, abilities about her cells. And without her family's consent, medical samples once again were taken from her body. And Dr. Gaze at the time was a prominent cancer researcher and virus researcher. And for years, he was receiving biopsy tissue samples from patients that had died of cervical cancer. And for years, every sample that Dr. Gay received quickly died a few days after he started testing in his laboratory. And this is where it gets very interesting. Almost a superhuman ability about Mrs. Henrietta Lacks' cells, however, is that unlike every other specimen that died in his laboratory, Mrs. Henrietta Lacks' cells doubled every 20 to 24 hours. This medical breakthrough literally changed the course, people, of medical history. And today, these cells are called posthumously HeLa cells after the first two letters of Mrs. Henrietta Lacks' name. And they are used to study the effects of toxins, drugs, hormones, and viruses on the growth of cancer cells without experimenting on human beings. Medical phenomenons, and it's also a legal disgrace. Despite Mrs. Henrietta Lacks' untimely death um, at the age of 31, her HeLa cells continue to positively affect the world. Her HeLa cells literally played a crucial role, get this everybody, in the development of the polio vaccine and 70 years later for the COVID vaccine. HIV, AIDS, IVF, all these uh, all these uh, diseases and all these viruses essentially have had positive vaccines created because of Mrs. Henrietta Lacks' cells. But sadly, Mrs. Henrietta Lacks' family was, was never financially compensated for any of this. 
In fact, her cells that were used for the groundbreaking medical research were used without her consent and her family once again until uh, the time I'm recording this, until last week in 2023, um, in July 2023, they were never financially compensated for any of this and then, uh, or any of the medical uh, patents and breakthroughs that came with uh, her cells. In many ways, everybody, Mrs. Henrietta Lacks' story is what I call a medical phenomenon, but a legal and an ethical disgrace. Polio. When I mention words like polio, it's kind of, it has literally no meaning or no connotation to today, but uh, because that disease has been completely eradicated, but everybody in the 1950s and the 1920s, 30s and 40s, things were very, very different. And the word polio was the most feared disease in America. It's actually interesting. If you kind of back it up a little bit, the earliest known records of polio are from the Babylonians literally 1500 years ago before the birth of Christ. Back then, however, it was simply known as lameness. It was simply known, known, known as a person being crippled. And the CDC estimates that during the height of polio, around a thousand children a day were being permanently crippled due to polio. And once again, since you're not familiar with this disease, Polio is a debilitating, life-threatening disease that affects the brain and the spinal cord that causes paralysis, sometimes permanent handicap, sometimes ability to be permanently handicapped, and in some cases, death. Between 5 to 10% of the people who are affected with polio die, and their symptoms include everything from extreme muscle weakness, fatigue, being crippled, joint muscle pain, and extreme pain. And sometimes this paralysis leads directly, once again, to what I said earlier, a permanent disability. Still, to this day, 60,000 people died from polio in 2022. And worldwide, the CDC estimates that over 300 million humans throughout history have had polio. So if you take a look at some of these older pictures from like 1940s and 1920s, you'll see kids walking around essentially on stretches or in wheelchairs. A lot of that, everybody, is because of the negative and the harmful effects of polio. Medical implications of uh, Mrs. Henrietta Lacks. What's interesting is that unlike other pandemics, polio for the most part was completely eradicated <laughs> due to vaccines. Uh, the Amer today, polio uh, cases in America are insanely rare. And for the most part, America completely wiped out a killer because unlike other pandemics or whatever, and other mass killers, the American people firmly got behind the vaccines for polio. And polio has literally been eradicated from America today due primarily once again to Mrs. Henrietta Lacks' HeLa cells. And since the 1960s, because of Mrs. Henrietta Lacks, global incidence of polio have decreased by literally 99.99% because of this miraculous woman. And despite her untimely death in 1951, Mrs. Henrietta Lacks' amazing cells, her HeLa cells, were directly used to create vaccines that literally eradicated polio and that ultimately created other vaccines once again as well. In 1955, Dr. Jonas Salk created the IPV inoculated polio vaccine and the OPV oral polio vaccine, and it got licensed by Congress. By 1961, only 160 confirmed cases were, uh, in America were actually found. People, I'm a numbers guy, so to put that in perspective, it's like this. Because of Mrs. Henrietta Lacks' HeLa cells and the vaccines that her uh, cells created, in 10 years... Polio cases and polio cases deaths dropped in America by literally 99.9987%. As I said earlier, due to Mrs. Henrietta Lacks's uh, cells, America literally eradicated a killer. And at the time of this recording, over 3 billion human beings worldwide have received the polio vaccine. How is it we have never, and this vaccine was created by this woman's cells. How is it that this is not common knowledge amongst the world that we live in or whatever? How is it that very few people have ever actually heard of Mrs. Henrietta Lacks? So people, you can actually make the case that this superwoman literally saved, as I stated earlier, millions of lives and prevented tens of millions of people from being paralyzed. Additionally, it should also be noted this, Mrs. Henrietta Lacks' cells were used for medical treatments for cancer, for HIV, for AIDS, for leukemia, for Parkinson's syndrome, for gene mapping, for the COVID vaccine, just to name a few. So I'm going to say this. Thank you, Mrs. Henrietta Lacks. As your cells have literally directly saved hundreds of millions of lives, but in such a sad and truly American way, your Black family, until recently, was never financially compensated for any of this. You're not even in the history books, unfortunately, which is disgusting. Because as once again, 
Her cells were taken from her body without her or her uh, husband's consent. And this is because this is a, is a financial challenge, everybody, until 2023, July 2023, her family never received one penny for any of these uh, patented medical breakthroughs. Before I go any further, everybody, please hit that notification bell so that you know um, when I drop new content. Please hit that like button. Please comment. Please sub uh, subscribe. Please share the uh, video. And uh, it helps me bring you guys free content and allows me to essentially continue to give you guys the kind of content that's going to help you build your generational wealth. Let's talk a little about the financial implications because earlier I was talking a lot about the medical implications of what uh, Henry, Henry, Mrs. Henrietta Lacks' family and what her cells did for the world. So I often talk about building generational wealth um, on this channel. I talk about building generational wealth in the United States of America because I very clearly am an American. Uh, one reason why I am so um, adamant about uh, minorities and about Americans building generational wealth is because for literally centuries, black and brown people systematically were denied the right to systematically build generational wealth in america whether it was basically them bombing cities like uh tulsa oklahoma whether it was them destroying cities like rosewood whether it was slavery the trail of bloody tears um the asian the asian internment camps or whatever uh people the, the uh tear, it goes on and on whether it was the outright thievery of black inventions and black inventors the, the thievery of uh, black land in places like mississippi alabama georgia florida um, there have been a series of things in this country that have directly led to the uh, de directly led to the American dream being denied to generations of black and brown Americans. And once again, Mrs. Henrietta Lacks' cells were used without her consent and her family's consent to create a medical miracle for the last 70 years. For comparison's sake, because we talk numbers and we get real on this channel, the pharmaceutical giant Pfizer made over $37 billion off the COVID vaccine alone. They use um, Mrs. Henry and Alexa cells to make that vaccine. The pharmaceutical giant Moderna made $18 billion alone off the COVID vaccine. They use Mrs. Henry and Alexa cells to make that vaccine. Dr. Jonas Salk, the guy that made the polio vaccine back in the 1960s, if he had patented that vaccine, he would have made, they said, an estimated $7 billion alone off the polio vaccine. And that's just in the United States of America. In other words, people, even if you don't take into account the uh, vaccines for HIV, for leukemia, and for Parkinson's syndrome, Mrs. Henrietta Lacks' cells were literally instrumental in creating those vaccines that created literally billions of dollars for Moderna and for Pfizer. And until recently, her family did not receive one friggin' penny for any of those billions. <laughs> Such an American thing, right? And honestly, everybody, until recently, many in the American medical community even refused to acknowledge the existence of where these HeLa cells even came from. Legal justice in 2023 and legal justice in the 21st century. So everybody, in 2021, the civil rights attorney, Benjamin Crump, filed a lawsuit against the pharmaceutical giant Thermo Fisher Scientific over the unethical use of Mrs. Henrietta Lacks' cells. This lawsuit was filed on behalf of the Henrietta Lacks estate, essentially her daughters, her sons, and her grandchildren. At the time of this recording, everybody, both the Lacks estate and the pharmaceutical giant agreed to a confidential deal with the Massachusetts-based biotech firm. I do not know how much money Mrs. Henrietta Lacks' family was compensated for uh, her sales being stolen for seven years, but what I do know is this. Her attorney, Benjamin Crump, who also represented the George Floyd family, stated that the financial settlement provides some measure of service and some measure of justice for Mrs. Henrietta Lacks, who died 70 years ago after her uh, cells were unethically used without her consent and without her family's consent. And once again, everybody, Mrs. Henrietta Lacks' cells, or her HeLa cells as they're called, were the first ever human cells to grow endlessly in a lab. As up to this point, all humans prior to that point, their cells died uh, within days of uh, being within the lab. And once again, everybody, as I said earlier, Mrs. Henrietta Lacks' HeLa cells directly led to the development of vaccines to fight polio, COVID, HIV. They led the uh, for, um, IVF for women's fertility. And those vaccines and treatments have literally created hundreds of billions of dollars for big pharmaceutical companies every year. They were never told that their mother, their daughter, and their wife's cells were used until a book came out in 2010 called The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. Mrs. Henrietta Lacks' granddaughter, Kimberly Lacks, she stated that they treated her grandmother like a lab rat. And she described the theft as pure racism as they profited heavily from her grandmother's death. 
And to their credit, uh, I will say this, the pharmaceutical giant Thermo Fisher agreed completely with Mrs. Kimberly Lax's words with the granddaughter of Mrs. Uh, of Miss Henrietta Lax. And Johns Hopkins University, to their credit, has a scholarship um, in the name and the honor of Mrs. Henrietta Lax. So justice came to this family literally 70 years after her death in 1951. Aftermath. Mrs. Henrietta Lacks' case is uh, another case in the long and dark American history and practice of essentially experimenting and exploitation of black and brown bodies for medical research. If you don't believe me, I want you to Google things like the Tuskegee experiments where the US Public Health Services from 1932 to 1972 knowingly infected thousands of black men at the Tuskegee Normal School with syphilis and watched them die so they could see what the effects of that disease were. 40 years of medical murder that sound like something straight out of Dr. Mengele's death camps in Germany. The Henrietta Lacks settlement is also opening up an entire new um, dialogue in regards to the medical community about how ethically human species and cells and human body samples are actually collected and where they're coming from. And uh, once again, this mother, this daughter, this wife, Mrs. Henrietta Lacks, she was a tobacco farmer from Virginia. She died from cancer. Companies made hundreds of billions of dollars off of her death without giving that family one penny. And today, 70 years later, they are finally, finally, finally getting some measure of financial compensation for their mother's death. Additionally, everybody, I'll take it to here as well. It is widely known that the white doctors that took Mrs. Henrietta Lacks' cells never asked her permission. And once again, I highly doubt if Mrs. Henrietta Lacks was a white female, it would have taken 70 years for her family to be compensated for Big Pharma unethically using and profiting off of her cells. But even though it did take 70 years, to all of my uh, listeners' credit, this is where the story that actually shows that America can change. And because this is a financial channel, I am ecstatic that the family of Mrs. Henrietta Lacks is going to finally be able to use some white medical racism to essentially create and build that black generational wealth. <laughs> My hope and prayer is that her family takes the most likely hundreds of millions of dollars settlement that they have and they partner with like a Magic Johnson or a Michael Jordan, they buy an NFL team. Or I don't know, maybe they uh, go the uh, Rockefeller route and they buy hundreds of millions of dollars of stocks in the S&P 500 and create generational wealth by using living trust and irrevocable trust that get passed down from generation to generation. That's how Rockefeller did it. Or maybe they go this route. Maybe they uh, basically go the route of the family of George Floyd and they purchase a stake in Walt Disney with the money. Either way, everybody, the money is theirs. And Mrs. Henrietta Lacks, I think she's finally getting the credit that she deserves in our history books. So God bless you, Mrs. Henrietta Lacks, and rest in paradise. Your immortal cells have literally changed the entire course of history and you saved literally millions of lives. That's why, I'm, that's why I want to give a shout out to the immortal Mrs. Henrietta Lacks. God bless you, okay? This channel, everybody, is all about making money. It's all about saving money. It's all about building generational wealth. And it's all about financially emancipating yourself from generational poverty. You can book a one-on-one uh, financial se um, session with me. Um, the link is going to be below. And I'm not giving you financial advice. Uh, it's up to you to, to essentially uh, take responsibility and do your own research as you uh, go through types of knowledge and types of things that I talk about. Um... Additionally, you can check out my uh, web. You can check out my uh, website at www.therealfinancialpatient.com. You can check out my Instagram page, the real underscore financial patient. My Spotify is financial patient. My TikTok is financial patient, just like it's spelled in that sign back there. My Facebook page is, is uh, financial patient, and uh, check out uh, my digital blog as well. It's four ninety five a month, where I go into a lot more detail about ETFs, HSAs, uh, mutual funds, index fund investing, crypto, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So with that, everybody. Uh, Please check out some of my digital my e products below as well. Hit that notification bell. Uh, please like, please comment, please share and subscribe. And thank you, everybody, for uh, listening to the channel. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. It's your boy, Chris. I'm out. Peace.